In May of 2007, former child actor Kirk Cameron and fellow advocate of idiocy Ray Comfort promised to scientifically prove the existence of God on national television. 100% absolutely without the use of faith. Of course that didn't happen. Religious beliefs, as everyone knows, are assumed on faith in lieu of proof and regardless of evidence. Cameron and Comfort had neither. Instead, they presented a series of fallacious absurdities revealing the depth of their own impressive ineptitude. First, they tried to parody cosmology and abiogenesis, as if criticizing them should somehow challenge evolution, as if disproving evolution could imply creation by default, as if God would only be indicated by a failure of science to explain what religion also does not explain as if science did not adequately explain every aspect of biodiversity very well and hadn't already disproved all the Genesis fables which Cameron and Comfort were still trying to save. Failing that, they immediately resorted to their usual staple of mind quotations, appealing to authority with irrelevant comments made by folks who often meant the very opposite of what these two implied. Then they revealed a profound incompetence in the subject of logic. We'll be simply producing knowledge by looking at three irrefutable evidences for God's existence. Creation is 100% scientific proof there was a creator. You cannot have a creation without a creator. Which brings me to my second evidence of God's existence. Something that God has put within each of us. The conscience. You're a self-admitted, lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate at heart. So hopefully, your conscience has been stirred by the commandments to show you you need God's forgiveness. Which brings me to the third evidence. This is the radical nature of conversion. When all that inevitably failed to impress anyone either, they tried to intimidate the audience with a sermon of emotional pleas entirely reliant on fear and ignorance. But this assembly wasn't stocked only with paranoid and superstitious zealots. This was a more intellectually curious group, many of whom already believed in God, but whether they did or not, everyone in attendance was sincerely disappointed with Cameron's and Comfort's inability to produce anything they promised. I think everybody here can tell that there was not one piece of evidence presented at all for their God. Comfort insulted fellow believers by assuming that if there is a God, then his religion and absurdly narrow interpretation of it was the only acceptable option, a notion his cohort unwittingly described as idolatry. Cameron insulted the rest of the audience by pretending to have once thought as rationalists do a lie he himself also accidentally exposed when he then accused rationalism of being a belief based on faith. Finally, Comfort implicitly admitted that his God could only be indicated if one was already determined to believe in it regardless of evidence, and the only claim they had to it depended on religious references which they had earlier promised they would neither need nor use. If they knew this going in, then their whole premise was phony because they also knew they didn't have any evidence, much less proof, and would have to rely entirely on assertions of faith and their reverence of Scripture. The invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. I find it incredulous, if not astounding, that when discussing the concept of all things, knowing all things, and having all things at your fingertips, you turn to the Bible a book riddled with things we know are wrong. Amazingly, subsequent interviews showed the duo apparently oblivious to any of their string of utter failures in that forum. They went into this venue as if they actually believed they had something to present, and may even have come out thinking they showed it. But much of the alleged evidence they declared to be irrefutable had already been refuted thousands of times. You've got adaptation within a species, but you've never seen any animal produce anything other than uh, because that's that not how evolution works. You say Hang on. that's well, not how faith. evolution Hang works. Over second. time, it'll turn into something else, but you've never seen it happen. No one's ever seen it happen. And that is called macroevolution. No one's ever seen it demonstrated. Science has never found a genuine transitional form that is one kind of animal crossing over into another kind, either living or in the fossil record. The problem was I never really took the time to look into the evidence myself, do the research, and actually see if the claims that they were making were true. The rest were merely unsubstantiated assertions, flatly stating as fact unsupported assumptions which can neither be evidenced nor confirmed, presenting their baseless speculation as though it were certain knowledge. God is going to punish murderers. He's good. He's just. He's going to make sure murderers get what's coming to them. But realize this, God is so good, he's also going to punish rapists, adulterers, pedophiles, fornicators, blasphemers, hypocrites, and even thieves and liars. 
Obviously, Cameron and Comfort hadn't any idea what they were talking about at any point, neither in fact nor fiction. They certainly didn't know what the word science, knowledge, proof, or evidence even mean. Creationists typically don't. We're all looking at the exact same facts. We're just coming to different conclusions. No, we're not. First of all, facts are objectively verifiable and thus indisputable data. But dogmatic religious beliefs depend instead on subjective impressions of personal preference, erroneous assumptions, and assertions of logical fallacies. Everything is just so incredibly complex, there had to be a creator. Everything that has information and is complex has to have been created. That's not true at all. Second, we could rationalize a few of the facts differently. But mere facts don't qualify as evidence until or unless they collectively indicate or can be accounted for by only one scenario over any other available option. By definition, the same evidence cannot imply two mutually exclusive opposing positions. Besides, we're obviously not both looking at ERVs, atavisms, transitional forms, physiological, anatomical, and molecular vestiges, ontogeny, and developmental biology, protein functional redundancy, convergent phenotypes, mobile genes, observed speciation, or the myriad methods of dating geologic stratigraphy, nor any twin-nested hierarchy of phylogenetic clades. All of these are peer-reviewed and verified accurate evidence positively promoting evolution as well as directly disproving creationism. But you know what we've never seen? We've never seen anything created. No one has ever seen a complex life form or anything else magically pop out of thin air. But that's what creationists are arguing for. Talismans, incantations, elemental component spells, enchantments, clairvoyance, and prophecies all consistently fail every test. To confirm this, James the Amazing Randy, a former Las Vegas illusionist well-versed in the angles used in supernatural pseudoscience, has for ten years offered a million-dollar prize for anyone who can show testable evidence of the things we should expect would also be true if there were ethereal entities influencing things with molecular structures. In that time, he has exposed a few frauds. But to date, no one has ever produced any actual evidence for faith healing, telepaths, psionics, precognitive psychic friends with astral bodies, past life remembrance, or spectral manifestations of any kind. So where is there any field of study or accurate fact positively promoting a magical creation? We're considering this matter of life origins, and there's an incredible body of pyramid of evidence in support of divine orchestration, divine engineering, divine creation. Great. Where is it? What is it? Because each of the arguments presented for irreducible complexity, the best arguments creationism ever had, were disproved scientifically and exposed in court. And apart from a series of frauds and falsehoods like these, the only arguments anti-science evangelists have ever had seem to be limited to nothing more than ignorant criticisms of dwindling and already irrelevant gaps in the ever-enveloping advancement of science. But vague criticisms against science still wouldn't count as evidence for creationism, even if those arguments weren't all completely wrong. Even if there was evidence of gods, it might not be their god. Even if it was, it still wouldn't be evidence for creation either, because it still wouldn't dismiss any of the evidence for evolution and against mythology. Nor could it change the fact that humans are still apes. Creation relies on a false dichotomy, rejecting all other options and insisting that there can only be two alternatives so they can imagine that criticizing the one will vindicate the other by default. Okay, question for Dr. Hoven. What is your strongest piece of evidence for creation? I think the evidence for creation would be the absolute impossibility of the contrary. Convicted fraud and pseudoscience charlatan Mr. Kent Hoven argues that what has already been directly observed and shown to be certainly true is, in his opinion, impossible, and the only option he thinks is possible is that an imperceptible mystical jinn conjured everything out of nothing with an incantation. Gods and magic are the most simplistic excuses ignorant primitives have ever imagined to explain anything. Therefore, a more logical argument could be made that reality is much too complex to have been deliberately designed by anything, much less an anthropomorphic deity. If there's nothing to imply that a god even exists, then there's no reason to assume it has unlimited powers either, and there's no hint of any means it could have used if there were such things. The irony is that what Hoven proposes is physically impossible because it defies all natural laws, and it's logically implausible since it has neither precedent nor parallel anywhere in reality to imply that it could still be true anyway. Where is there evidence anywhere that anything supernatural actually exists, or that anything even could have any of these abilities? The evidence of evolution, and even the event of evolution itself, the proof of it, are both directly observed and testable and demonstrably factual. But religious beliefs are none of the above, and never have been. They're assumed on faith. 
whether or not these beliefs turn out to be correct, they are asserted as true without justification in the form of evidence.